This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wild. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them back into the abyss. Now, there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. They were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed of demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. So along with the beginning of the long green season in the church year, this week, summer also officially arrives. School is out, and lots of us are getting ready for vacation. And in today's Gospel reading, it appears that Jesus also was looking for a little bit of vacation time himself. In the lead up to today's reading, Jesus has been constantly teaching and healing. He's had to deal with his family showing up and apparently expecting extra attention from him. And everywhere he goes, the crowds follow him. And so finally, he says to his disciples just before today's gospel reading begins, hey guys, let's get into the boat and go to the other side of the lake. You know what's on the other side of the lake? Gentile territory. Places where people who are not Jews live, as is made clear that when they get there they find people with herds of pigs. And that means that probably on the other side of the lake, nobody has heard of Jesus. Nobody will be chasing him around, and probably the crowds aren't going to follow him over there either. So, that should be a good place to take a break for maybe a few days. Jesus and his disciples can get rest and recharge, and then they can go back and resume their work. But as soon as Jesus comes ashore, he's met by a guy who's possessed by demons. Apparently, he's possessed by a lot of demons because they call themselves legion. That is, they nickname themselves after the thousand soldiers in a Roman legion. But unlike other demon possession stories up to this point, and in Luke's gospel, there have already been a bunch, nobody expects Jesus to be there. Nobody has brought this guy to Jesus and asked for help. Even the guy himself does not speak and ask for help, only the demons. Yet Jesus, even though he's probably on his first day of vacation, decides he's going to help this guy, even though it was not expected. In fact, he does what God says in Isaiah in today's first reading, that God is always doing. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask and found by those who did not seek me. And so Jesus cast the demons out of the man, sends them into the herd of nearby pigs, they run into the lake and drown, and the man is healed and in good shape. But the story also doesn't end like other demon possession healings at this point. The people in the surrounding area are not so happy about this. In fact, they are shaken and afraid. They're not very happy that Jesus is there, and they ask him to please go and vacation someplace else. The problem is not that they didn't believe that Jesus had actually cast out the demons. 
And they don't also appear to be unhappy about the fact that this poor guy has been healed either. Rather, it seems that they did not really want to be helped when they were not asking for help. Yes, this guy was possessed of many demons, and that was bad. As far as we can tell, nobody liked that. But they had found a way to manage the situation. He lived outside the city, where he wouldn't be too much trouble for them, for them and, and probably people came by and they left him food. So you know, Jesus, we have systems for dealing with our problems. The system is more or less working. So please do not mess with our systems when we didn't ask you for help. Seems that these folks really didn't want to be helped by people they were not expecting. Now, we really don't know much about these folks who lived across the lake. Who knows, you know, where or from what God they might have thought help might come. But wherever it might have come, a bunch of Galileans hopping off a boat from across the lake was not what they either expected or probably even were willing to accept. And like many other folks, if help does not come packaged in the ways that I expect it, I'm not so sure that I want to accept help in that way. They didn't either. And these folks, they didn't seem to want to accept help, especially when the help disturbed their sense of security. Part of the reason they didn't like Jesus messing with their systems was that their systems involved herding pigs. Like flocks of sheep and goats in Israel, herds of pigs were their economy. And if you've felt just a bit of anxiety lately as your retirement account balance has plunged, you get exactly how these folks felt when the herd of pigs plunged into the lake. It's nice you healed this guy, Jesus. We're really glad about that. But couldn't you do this in a way that makes us feel warm and fuzzy instead of, as Luke says, seized with great fear? So perhaps one of the things that this story calls us to consider is whether we also may resist God's presence and God's help when we're not looking for it or asking for it. Because I don't know about you, but I'm always telling God what I want God to help me with and how I would like God to act in my life or where I would like to see and feel God's presence. But sometimes, I also realize that just like those folks on the opposite side of the lake, I may be resistant to God's help and presence when I am not looking for help, at least not with that problem. I also have my systems for dealing with life and its problems. You probably do too. We need to. And there have also been plenty of times in my life when well-meaning people have offered to help me. And at that moment, I realized, wait, this is anti-help. This is actually going to make my problems worse. And so, based on those kinds of things, I often do not look for or even want help with certain problems. And, you know, I know in retrospect that there have been times in my life where I know that God was trying to point me into a new direction, but I really didn't want to hear it, even when it was coming from God. I didn't want that kind of help. That's kind of what's happening in today's Gospel reading, and perhaps Luke includes this story because he wants to remind us not to miss out on what Jesus may be doing in our lives because a particular problem or a particular situation is not on our personal laundry list of problems that we want or expect God's help with. And while it's fine to ask God for help for things that we know we need help with, it's important also to realize that God loves us enough to help us even when we're not asking, even when we're not looking for it. And I also may be resistant to God's help when help does not come packaged in ways that I expect. Maybe this is true for you too. But it's often the case that when I do ask God for help, I envision a specific way I hope that help will come, that I want that help to come. In fact, I expect my problem to be solved in a certain way, and that's the way I want God to do it. I look for that way, I plan for that way, and I am really, really confused if the help looks like a bunch of guys getting off the boat from the other side of the lake, packaged in a way I do not expect it, maybe coming from a direction I was not looking for it. But again, 
Perhaps Luke includes this story to remind us that Jesus often works in ways that we didn't expect and that we do not envision. And so at least we should be open to God's help through people and situations we had not imagined before. And I also know that I am resistant to God's help and presence if God's help disturbs my sense of security and control. Especially when things are difficult and chaotic, I don't need more chaos and instability in my life. I don't want or need my pigs running into the lake. But again, maybe Luke includes this story to remind us that sometimes the only way for God to help us, help us, in fact, get beyond whatever we're dealing with, the chaos and the stress and the confusion, where I want to minimize that right now, sometimes the only way for God to help us get beyond that is to actually mess things up further, because that's the only way beyond what we're going through right now. And while I never like that, maybe it's also a reminder to consider whether in those situations, in the midst of that chaos, stress, and confusion of life, I have become more attached to and maybe secure in my herd of pigs than I am in the God who gave me the herd in the first place. I suspect that I will always be more happy and more comfortable accepting God's help and God's presence when I've asked for it and when it comes packaged in ways that I am expecting. But today's gospel reminds us that God is always seeking us out and looking to help us even when we're not looking for help. And today's gospel reminds us that Jesus loves us enough to make his presence known in ways that we do not expect, even when we're not asking.